Hello and welcome to Best Practices for 5th Grade Unit 16 Three-Dimensional Figures. My name is Jen and I'm a site-based math coach. What do you notice? What do you wonder? This is an aerial view of the beautiful Tampa skyline. Hopefully you see the various shapes of the buildings. By the end of this unit, your students will be able to recognize and identify all the attributes and names of these buildings. In this unit, students will identify and classify three-dimensional figures based on their attributes, such as number of faces, number and shape of bases, whether or not there is an apex, and curved versus straight edges. They will focus on pyramids, prisms, cylinders, cones, and spheres. What does student learning look like in the classroom? When building vocabulary about 3D shapes, it is important for teachers to allow students to have hands-on, real-world experiences with these figures. They should have opportunities to identify and sort the figures based on their attributes, then become fluent with the vocabulary through multiple examples and scenarios. These are examples of MTRs 1 and 7. What does student learning sound like in the classroom? Since this unit is so heavy on vocabulary, it is important that students are continually discussing the attributes of the various 3D figures. They should describe, identify, compare, and discuss differences between the figures and the attributes. Students might mix up some of the different figures, but for example, should respond with an understanding that a vertex is the point where any two edges meet, while an apex is always opposite the base. Again, there is a ton of vocabulary here, so discussion and examples are imperative for students to own the meanings and be able to use the attributes to identify the figures. There is a lot of vocabulary in this unit, and this list can be found on the parent letter in STEM scopes. Again, it is important that students have many opportunities to discuss and write using all of this vocabulary so that they can truly own it and remember it. When demonstrating their learning, students should identify and describe the figures in different ways. When given a model, they can describe, or maybe the shape is described and students have to fill in the blanks. A fun fluency activity can involve this mystery game where students are given clues to help them identify the figure. Finally, multiple choice questions may be given to see if students can select the correct grouping or descriptions of given figures. These are examples of MTRs 2 and 5. These questions come from SmartSmarts and can be used to gauge student understanding. So for example, asking what the difference is between a pyramid and a prism, or describing the similarities and differences between certain figures. Using Play-Doh or modeling clay can be a great way to extend the learning at home. Have your child model various three-dimensional figures or go on a 3D scavenger hunt to find three-dimensional figures in the real world. These and other ideas can be found in the STEM Scope's parent letter. We know our students all think they're artists and they love to draw and doodle, so it will be okay if your students are drawing some 3D figures throughout this unit, just hopefully at the appropriate time. Have fun teaching. Thanks for watching.